Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. In this update, we're going to be talking about potential tropical storm Zeta that looks to have impacts in Jamaica as well as the Cayman Islands and then eventually into Cancun and then will end in the southeastern part of the U.S., by the middle of next week so before i do get started if you do like weather related content please subscribe to my channel as i will upload about five videos a week to keep you updated and i do ask you to share this video with your friends and family that may be impacted from this storm so we've got a lot to talk about here is the latest update from the national hurricane center as the 5 p.m eastern standard time advisory they have upgraded this storm from what was Invest 95L to Tropical Depression 28. It has formed a little bit further south than some of the guidance has uh, uh, was saw because we had a lot of dry air on the north side, pushed it a little bit, tad bit further south. The uh, hurricane hunters were in there. They did find a little bit of an area of a low pressure to upgrade it to a tropical depression, but it's crawling. It is literally crawling at two miles an hour. And that is going to be the main problem with this system because it really doesn't go anywhere anytime soon. It does actually officially become a storm by tomorrow, by the hurricane National Hurricane Center, and then eventually head to the northwest, may cross uh, the Yucatan and impact Cancun, but this is by Monday and this is Saturday, so only crawls that very much in two days, dumping relentless amount of rain in the Caribbean and eventually get into the Gulf of Mexico where they do officially up it to a hurricane by then and then get picked up by the trough. And luckily there is some shear with this cold front coming in. So it looks to peak out in the middle of the Gulf and then weaken on the approach to the Southeast. So let's kind of look at the overall uh, guidance from uh, the satellite picture and kind of show you where uh, Tropical Depression 28 is it right now. It's basically south of the Cayman Islands. And this is like a little bubble here where the thunderstorms have con kind of congealed together. But regardless of where the center is, essentially all of the Caribbean into, into Jamaica, I've seen a lot of pictures of flooding rains into Jamaica, and you're going to get more rains, uh, unfortunately, flooding rains. There's been some landslides there. So more to come for uh, today, later on today, uh, you know, if not tomorrow, and with this thing really not moving very much, unfortunately, we're going to have to extend it all the way out to Monday now with uh, impacts in Jamaica, and then a lot of rain into the Cayman Islands, but it'll eventually start to move off to the northwest, impacting uh, the Yucatan. Now, let's kind of take you back and where you know, there, here's a chart that I, you know, I put together. Uh, what, they've been actually tracking her, a storm since 1851 uh, for the last, uh, you know, what, 170 years now. And you can see where um, the Zeta is going to come to fruition. There's been about 14 named storms during this time frame that have uh, been named. So this is the highlighted area where they typically get named uh, this time of year. And as it swings off into the Gulf of Mexico, you can see the anomalies where, you know, Texas is really not a player in this because it'd be very uh, difficult to uh, get a storm. It's only happened one other time in history in 170 years. So, so it, more or less, it's going to be branching off to Louisiana in between uh, probably the uh, eastern parts of Louisiana and to, to the panhandle of Florida is pretty much the bullseye right at this moment. But now let's take a look at the uh, the lowest millibars of all the storms that came to fruition over the last 170 years in this area. And here's Wilma. We're on the anniversary, the 15th anniversary of Wilma. We're just bottomed out to an 882. But there's been some very big name storms this time of year coming out of the Caribbean. So this is the uh, the area concern. But you know, even after this one, there may be another storm in about 10 days from now that we might have to take a look at as well. So. But that is kind of far off for now but because this area is, is, you know, inundated with very warm waters. This is basically where Zeta is formed is the warmest waters in the Caribbean at the moment. It's almost off the charts. So no, uh, there's no wonder why uh, Zeta has, was able to form under the right conditions with upward rising motion air. Now, if we take a look at the latest uh, European guidance, that was, this has dramatically shifted westward 
And this, I think, takes it a little bit too far west. Like I mentioned, I think the Euro model has been having a westward bias uh, this year for some reason. And I don't think it's going to get quite as far west. I showed you some of the anomalies. So it's very difficult to get a storm in Texas. Uh, that part, even into Louisiana, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult. So uh, right in the middle of the road, here's the latest uh, European model. But it pretty much general consistency takes it a little bit further west than the official guidance from the National Hurricane Center. And here's the latest uh, GEFS model. I was going to take you kind of some, you know, summary of some of the models. And uh, this takes it a little bit further east. So uh, this would take it, you know, more or less into like a Sally type uh, landfall uh, in the panhandle of Florida, right in the kind of the, kind of in the middle of the range. So that is the latest uh, GFS. And then here's a summary of all the models. If we just kind of compacted them all into one, it pretty much a consistence across the board, somewhere around in the middle of, um, you know, the southeast coast of the U.S., possibly into the panhandle. Uh, Florida by the time Wednesday and Thursday rolls around. But now let's take a look at the latest uh, hurricane models and what they kind of show. This is the uh, HWRF and this is the HMON. And I show these because these have been fairly accurate as far as intensity goes uh, when, a when, a, when a storm first gets named. So the official guidance has it going to a 75 mile per hour hurricane, but this one ups it just a tad bit. This one would up it, these are not, so you would add about six to eight, eight uh, miles per hour to that. So that would up it uh, max out to about 85 mile per hour if this were to uh, hold true. And then the h bonds a little tad bit more bullish. It actually brings it to possibly up to 100 mile per hour uh, hurricane. So, but no, the official guidance as of right now maxes it out to a 75 mile per hour hurricane a little bit further south than what this is showing uh, in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. But now let's take up the latest uh, European model. And this is what I'm most concerned about early on with this storm is the torrential amount of rainfall because you saw the guidance. It's literally crawling at two miles an hour. And when you have an atmosphere that's capable of producing four inch per hour per hour rainfall rates, you can land some really um, copious amounts of uh, rain and areas that are already saturated soil. So that's why you're getting landslides in these areas. And unfortunately, that does look to continue into Jamaica, into the Cayman Islands, into uh, uh, Cuba, just because this area does not go anywhere anytime soon. And by uh, even tomorrow, uh, with it crawling at two miles an hour, it'll be a storm by then, but it'll be directly over, you know, essentially south of the Cayman Islands, dumping a lot of rainfall, but well away from the center, you're still going to get those two inch rainfall rates uh, possible in uh, Jamaica. So definitely be on the lookout. Even though this storm is past you guys, you're still going to be in the culprit of the right front quadrant of this uh, circulated system around, and you'll get those uh, feeder bands coming into the island. And even on, even on Monday, unfortunately, as this system just takes its time, it's barely making it into the Yucatan uh, right now on, on Monday. And this is two days from now. So a good solid three days left for you guys in uh, Jamaica from dealing with impacts uh, from this system, as well as the Cayman Islands, as well as uh, Cuba. And yeah, you might get, uh, you will get some, uh, some uh, more rain into South Florida from this system early on, but it'll swing into the Yucatan and start impacting Cozumel, Playa del Carmen, into Cancun, and potentially cross over the northern tip of the Yucatan and eventually get into the Gulf of Mexico, but it's gonna be literally by Tuesday. So three or four days from now, it's gonna take its sweet time, but eventually it'll be picked up by this trough and kind of pick up speed and uh, potentially make landfall somewhere around this area by Wednesday into Thursday of the middle of next week. But now let's take a look at the European uh, guidance as far as winds. Let's look at the winds and uh, are all these areas in green, you're talking anywhere from uh, 40 mile per hour gust are definitely possible over the next several days on the outskirts of these feeder bands in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. And closer to the center, yes, you'll get some of those higher wind gusts of uh, possibly 50 plus uh, or greater. And then obviously if it, it, it starts to form in the Gulf of Mexico, then you're gonna start getting some more higher wind gusts 
and depending on where it maxes out at, probably a 65 mile per hour gust is a good bet along the southeast coast. And then also eventually get picked up by the trough and swing up to the north, uh, northeast, but dump in a lot of rain into Mississippi and Alabama and to northern Georgia and eventually into uh, Tennessee by the by the weekend uh, as this races off races off into the northeast. But I appreciate you guys uh, watching this video. Be sure to like it and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to uh, share this video with your friends and family on social media that may be impacted uh, from these from this uh, storm to let them know it's coming. And uh, subscribe to my channel uh, to catch me in the next video where I protect you before and after the storm.